gentlemen, my colleagues Rita Komla, Sharon Lanamo, Reginald and Michael Bookman Emisa, and I, Evita, we are the SCIS Business Associates. After struggling to find a device or to produce something new that doesn't already exist, we, we present to you Zers. It's an, an exceptional, useful resource for students' education. It's a device for students, teachers, and parents as well. The four main features of this device is that its capability to interact with handheld devi um, mobile devices in the sense that in the sense that if your phone is a distance away, you will be able to receive text messages and receive calls on the device. It also has the ability to measure your concentration levels in class through the body wave. With Wi-Fi, teachers will be able to send assignments to students. And also, this would really interest the parents here that if your ward goes to school and if they get assignments, they would be, it would alert you and let you know that your ward has homework to do and if your ward has submitted the homework. We know that when a lot of students come home from school and parents say, oh, how was your day? Or how was school? Did you get assignments? Most of us, even me, I have done it before. Most of us go like, oh, we don't have homework, so we'll go and play. Or, oh, school was fine. But then we don't know, the parents don't know this for sure. And then when the end of the term comes, then they see the, their children's results and it's like, wow, I think you are doing well in school. With this said, I would like to call on Sharon and Mo to give us a more detailed information about this device. Thank you, Evita. Um, I'm Sharon. I'm here to brief you on how and what the device really is. The Zers will be able to interact with handheld devices in order for students to be able to communicate effectively via Bluetooth connections. This feature may be turned on and off depending on the time it's needed. For example, in class where students are not supposed to receive phone calls or text messages, this feature should be off. How are we going to do this? Now, we are going to adapt a technology called the body wave, which was developed by the Freer Logic International. This technology consists of three body sensors that connect the skin and reads brain activity. The brain wave patterns are trans transmitted via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connections to handheld devices or computers. The brain wave patterns can vary depending on the level of concentration and alertness of the brain. I guess you're all wondering how this will benefit students, teachers, and parents as well. Now, teachers during their teaching lessons will be able to, to, to determine where students are less attentive in class by reading their brain performance. Students can also monitor their brain, their brain concentration in order to determine what subjects to learn at a, at a particular time or whether it's time to take a break or have some fun. Now for parents, parents who are always on the go, business trips, they're always not at home. These parents would no longer have problems with whether or not their children are doing their homework or whether they are active in, in school. Parents will also receive prompts wherever they are by downloading a, an application and a unique login to their children's device. With this, I would like to call my fellow associate, Reginald Barfo, to brief us properly. Oh, sorry, one more. Um, whenever the assignments of students are delivered and teachers receive them, the prompts automatically stops. And as you can see, this is very, that picture down there, 
it's kind of weird, but it actually happens in our day-to-day -day activities where students go to school and they're like, okay, my dog ate my homework. So there are no more excuses because your parents know you have homework. With this, I would like to call my fellow associates, Reginald Baffo, to brief us properly on our target market. Thank you very much, Sharon. I'm Reginald, and I'm here to tell you more about our target market. Most parents, teachers, and students have problems when it comes to communicating with academics. Parents complain to teachers that the awards do not bring assignments home, or the awards come home and all they do is to play. Teachers also complain to parents that, oh, your award didn't do my assignment. I don't know what he or she was doing at home. And students give silly excuses claiming that they forgot their homework and all that. But with Azers where students have no option than to do their homework because the Azers where will prompt them that they have an assignment to do. And our main target market is high school students. We intend to introduce our device to most schools so that it will help their teachers and pay Teachers, parents, and students have a good communication when it comes to academics. Most parents, some parents and teachers have been given the device to try, and they recommended, they recommended it to other schools because of what it does for them. Since we are going to collaborate our device with other schools, we intend to gain more, we intend to gain our revenue from schools we, which we've supplied it, which we supplied our goods to, and also schools overseas. With this, I would like to call on my fellow associates, Richard Komla. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm Rita Komla, and our source of revenue is to come from the sale of the device to schools around the country and other African countries. We also expect to get access into the international market within two years after the commissioning of our, com um, commencing of, of the production of the product. Okay, you're all wondering how the Zerx wear is different from all the other wearable technologies. Okay, the Zerx wear is able to measure a student's concentration level in class, and this enhances his or her performance. Parents who are always on the go are able to monitor their children's welfare in school and see if they're able to do their works on time and always submit their homeworks. And this helps both the teacher and the parents because it helps the um, ward do well. Okay, so the Zeus where helps a teacher because if you're teaching, and your students aren't really paying attention. They don't get what you teach. So with the Zerx where you're able to know when your students aren't paying attention. And the Zerx where is going to be a trendy, fashionable device, which will come in different colors, and it will be waterproof and be worn by high schoolers. So with this, I call on Michael Brookman, Amy Sa to give us um, our profitability analysis and cost assumptions. Thank you. OK. Okay, so we came up with our, um, we came up with a total cost for the device based on the cost of a, a, an individual part of the device. We're going to obtain patents for, for, for the use of body wave technology. We're going to obtain patents for the use of body wave technology at $15 per device. Some of the easier to make parts, like the body of the device, will be 3D printed to reduce unnecessary costs. And uh, parts of the device, like the, the interior parts of the device that cannot be 3D printed, since they are too complicated, will be obtained from Intel at a cost of $50. Production is expected to be around $150 per device, and other minor costs 
are pegged to be around 0.25% of the total costs to cater for unforeseen events that might occur in the future. So the total estimated cost of producing, producing a device is expected to be $287.5. We're going to sell this device for $450 because we looked on the, we looked, we researched on the markets and found out that similar devices, we found out the prices of similar devices and we realized that this price would be very affordable. Yeah. In the first year, we expect to sell 1,000 devices to 10 schools with a total population of, with an estimated population of 100 students. And in the second year, we expect to sell 5,000 devices to 50 plus schools all around the world. But by then we were expected to reduce the cost, the price of the device. And in the third and subsequent years, the sale is expected to grow at a rate of 20% per year. And we expect the cost of, the, cost of producing the device to fall to 10% per year due to increasing economies of scale. And I'd like to call on Evita Gonomensa to conclude this presentation. Okay. Um, to conclude on what my fellow colleagues have said, I'd like to share the profitability analysis table. Well, we can see the sales revenue and less cost of inputs and selling expenses from year one to year five. And we can see the net profits from year one to net, uh, year five. We can see that the net profit is increasing as the year goes by. But when we look at the percentage changes in profit, the ways that we see that we could make this not go to, like, to an extreme level is by updating our, our device every year, finding out what other, um, consumers want and what they need to be able to make our device better. And also, Okay, so um, to end our presentation, I'd like to say that if parents here and whoever here is thinking, oh, this device is very expensive, why should I buy it? Well, think about this, parents. Your, your, your students, you gave birth to these people. You send us to school, and I know our education is very important to you. You want us to make something of ourselves. And this is something that, this is not like the iPhone where your child is on it 24-7, making calls, texting people, and just doing unnecessary things. This will benefit your children. It will also benefit, it will help the teachers be able to do their job easily. So I'd like to say that if you guys have heard this quote, if, educa if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. With this said, if anyone is interested in investing in our products, you may email us on scisbus at gmail or call the number you can see on your screen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Just move over this way, please. Judges. Can I please 
Christian again. He does I, I believe that there may be some objection from the students, not from the parents, to being monitored. Uh, there may, uh, there are certain bodies uh, throughout the world, the United Nations, for example, that may consider that an invasion of privacy. How would you overcome that? Okay. Yes, I, I believe that we students would want to be monitored. Uh, but then the thing is that we're going to make it very trendy, like, we're going to make it's like a trap shoe. Like we're going to design it in a way you see Amma wearing it, Kofi wearing it, Ajra wearing it, and all of a sudden you want to wear it because that's the new fashion. Because I believe our generation, we like, we don't necessarily have to believe in something to be able to have it. We just feel like, oh, all my friends have it, so why don't I have it? And also, I also think that because we're, wearing, we're going to work with schools, it's going to be something you have to wear. And parents will also make sure, like, if you take it off, it's going to alert your parents that it's off. So, and you wouldn't want your mom coming and saying, hey, why is it or yelling at you or anything. So you will put it on, and that's what's going to happen. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. So this is uh, following up from uh, Professor Radio's question. Um, um, I'm a bit skeptical as to whether students would want to wear it and what effect they'll actually have towards them. Because, um, as you can imagine, every student's circumstances are different. And that will affect their concentration level at school. Maybe they're having problems at home. Uh, maybe they walk to school instead of getting driven to school. You know, that affects you when you get into a classroom. And so, just because, you know, you're brain is functioning in a certain way does not really reflect how good a student you are, how much potential you have. So how do you solve those, those issues? Okay, so the first concentration in class. But then I believe that if it could be monitored, and let's say if it's letting your parents or your teachers that oh, this ward is not paying attention in class. So it will make the teachers and parents come together to find a solution. So if that's the case, then the ward could be called in and ask what's going on. Like it's not something that is it's not meant to be advice that would like let your parents get angry. Why are you not concentrating in class? Like concentration in concentrating in class or anything like that to so like make you yell at you or anything. It's to help you. So I believe that if the teachers and parents come together and they, they are letting that this child is not sorry. That if this child is not um, able to concentrate, they will work together to solve the problem. And that's what I think. Thank you very much, Soul Clinic Business Associates. Give them a good hand.